talked to these are the materials I use to build my canvases, what do you, if you want to call them that, or my, my boards. So I do a lot of one by twos and I glue and staple to uh, either Luon, and lately I've been using the hardwood. So uh, it's all painted. Well, the hardwood's a little heavier, but it doesn't uh, flex and bow as much you know, according to weather. So this one, you can see it's a little bit wobbly, but uh, prime on both sides, sand the edges. And it's a good solid surface to put Venetian plaster on. Venetian plaster comes from paint stores. That's what I use. What I do is have them tinted to my value, my my palette. So it's basically almost like a like a little plaster. So it's really thick, but it's put on a board in very thin coats, literally less than a mil thick. And then I, like I said, I put them into colors to match my palette. So pretty primary colors. And they're very vibrant. vibrant. But I do several coats. I prime and then I do skim coats of Venetian plaster to get the base for what I'm going to do or drawings or whatever. So it's part of this is just putting skim coats on. but a little bit goes a long way. So skim coating over this, this has already had some texture to it, but when they do a brand new board, the skim coating is just, just this. It's putting it on very thin, putting it on and kind of scraping it off. So the angle of the, the six inch blade is different. So I put it on and then I scrape it off. So it's just giving a really thin coat, but it's filling some of these crevices and making it for a very smooth surface. And you can leave spots that are rough if you like, because you'll keep doing skim coats. A process of some of the Venetian plasters can take up to 30, 40 different little skim coats of color paint or Venetian plaster. And in between those coats, you can use multimedia. You can do color pencil, graphite, pastels, you know, and then skim coat over those. So it feels like it's part of the, the, the canvas. For example, this one started the same way as this, but it has skim coat after skim coat. Then I did the pencil drawing and then skim coat again. So now in the process, we'll show later, how we take some of that back down so this comes through, some of the drawing comes through, and these colors will become more vibrant. But we'll get to that. So this is a board that's had one skim coat on it, or several skim coats, but it's a very flat surface. So what I try to do is give the, the piece texture, and it doesn't take a whole lot. I can use a sponge or you can use a rag, but I just kind of put the texture on. And you can do anything. That's the great thing about Venetian plaster. There's no wrong way of doing it because there's, there's different small details that you can do with how to burnish it, how to sand it, how to get it really smooth. But in between there, you can do anything. You can put any kind of texture you want, splatter, drizzle. But I like to do this texture. And then what we do is just kind of do a knockdown. What that will do is give deep areas that the skim coat can fill in as it smooths out the whole piece. The great thing about the Venetian plaster, it dries really quick. And it's also your enemy too. So you can kind of see that with the sheen difference, you'll be able to see where the texture is and where it's not. Do several skim coats. I do a lot of the texture. Then I'll go do and basically use a, a palette knife with colors, and it's the same as doing the, the knockdown. I'll put the paint where I want it and then skim it in certain directions to try to give that look of, of the flowers or the foliage behind. And then after that, I'll, I'll come back and do some of the drawing on it just to do 
some of the darker values. That way when I skim coat, it almost feels like the drawing is inside the piece, not just on the top. So I do the drawings and then when I skim coat, certain areas of the texture fill in, kind of breaking up those lines. So. Sometimes I put a lot of detail, sometimes I just kind of make random lines. It's almost look like cracks. One drawback to the Venetian plaster, yet it's also the exciting part, is that you can lose some of these details. So you could do this whole drawing, and then the thing I love about Venetian plaster, which I also hate, is I don't have total control. So there's a lot of those pleasant mistakes, those little beautiful elements to the painting that I can't deliberately create. So also makes it interesting that they can never repeat that piece. So it's really hard to duplicate this drawing or this piece because I don't know how the paint's going to come off the, the palette knife or the six inch blade. So if you're really into realism, this is a good way to get you outside of your comfort zone is to play with something like this where you don't have total control. Which isn't to say that you can't have a lot of detail, but I think that's the fun part is taking control out. And I don't know if you can see in a lot of this parts, I've already done a lot of drawing deep inside underneath two or three of the glazes. So once again, it just keeps creating depth. And once I sand all of this and burnish it, those will even come closer to the surface. And when I do Venetian plaster, I do two different grits of sandpaper. One is 320, it's a little rougher, and it'll, it'll bite into the, the plaster a little bit and take some of what I want off. So you can kind of control it that way too. You can sand a little harder, <clears throat> get a little smoother, and then I go with a 400 grit. a wet rag and get some of that dust off so you can see how it's starting to bring it the colors in that's just getting some of the dust off and the skim coat is so thin that if you do a white skim coat over it what you can do is just a little more wet and you can take it right down to the other colors with more pressure, pulling more of that skim coat off. So you can control, I want more of these flowers to pop through that color. So I'm really trying to get some of that top glaze off that I put on. So you can see how these colors are starting to really pop through. So, I think this is smooth enough. But we're gonna burnish it. So burnishing is exciting. If I can find my knife. I use a six inch knife, basically any kind of blade. It's hard to see from there, but I curve it a little bit on it so that the corners don't dig into the to the Venetian plaster. So I'm not sure if you can see down that. 